Hello and welcome back to the Sketch Pad Pod. I'm Alicia and today we are going to be talking about Anya's painting style. Before we start the video, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who watched and left a comment or uh, subscribed after my last video. I was just amazed by how many people turned up for that. That was crazy. And there is 150 of you that are now subscribed, which is kind of terrifying, blows my mind. But yeah, big, big thank you. And yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to bringing you guys some more videos, some more art historical content. As you may be able to tell, I am not in the same room as I was last time. I am back at university. It has been a very weird year and a half considering you guys liked my last video and I had some really good suggestions of people that I could talk about next, I decided that I would do another video uh, on a similar vein and perhaps we can make this a bit of a series. Why not? So today we are going to be looking at Anya's work. Anya is um, a great YouTuber and uh, she is also a painter and she makes lots of great wacky art content so definitely go check her out and we're going to be seeing how her work may fit into an art historical context namely surrealism and if that is something that interests you keep watching and let's start the video So in preparation for this video, I sat down and watched a number of Anya's specific uh, videos where she's making her own work in her own style. And I took some notes, not only on the physical attributes of the work, but also on the things that she was saying about how she works and what her artwork means to her. And she herself does refer to her love of surrealism, especially Frida Kahlo, and so I wanted to give a brief outline of what surrealism is, how it started, and the main ideas or influences behind it, and then I'm going to go through a number of Anya's works and talk about how surrealism and other influences relate to her specifically. Just to say, all of my research links will be in the description down below. So, what is surrealism? When we think of the word surreal, we often think of the bizarre, um, the irrational, or the hallucinatory, something that is out of the norm. But when we talk about surrealism, it was a movement that was not only artistic, but also political and literary, predominantly during the 1920s to the 1940s. The term surrealism was first used by Guillaume Apollinaire. It was used to describe his new forms of plays. A lot of its inspiration came from the Romantic era and it was heavily inspired by early artists such as Henri Rousseau and Arnold Bocklin. Surrealism emerged out of Dadaism, a movement that was inherently anti-art or anti-traditional art. Dada used nonsense and nonsensical pairings of objects, words, images as a way to criticise and deconstruct the structures and institutions that had brought about the horrors of the First World War. But surrealists didn't want to just disrupt the hierarchy that they saw in the world, they wanted to reinvent it. They saw this as a much more positive and constructive way to use art, and it was a reaction against the rationalistic culture of Europe at the time. The founder of surrealism can be traced back to André Breton, who was a poet writing the Surrealist Manifesto in 1924. His manifesto was based on the works of Sigmund Freud and his ideas on 
human psychoanalysis. Freud believed that the human mind was made up of both a conscious and unconscious psyche, with the unconscious psyche expressing our desires, interests and imagination. And Breton saw this unconscious mind as a well of ideas and imagination that hadn't been brought to the surface. They would often record dreams or trances in a way to try and uncover the unconscious mind. And each artist was going on their own journey of self-exploration and it was a very individualistic study of the self or the mind and so because of this the styles or presentations of the work would definitely vary. Some used automated repeated patterns or techniques while some formed a symbolic language to express their desires or unconscious urges and others would manipulate materials and the ways in which they were working to create new or bizarre images that questioned the way that we looked at reality. Often they used chance encounters with found objects which was definitely inspired by the Dada movement and they would use everyday objects in collages or in assemblages and they would reframe them as artworks or as functionless objects. They also liked to draw inspiration from non-Western cultures. They saw it as an alternative aesthetic and a different or opposing ideal of social values. The idea of the uncanny was that it was something familiar and yet strange at the same time. And as World War II approached, many of the artists had to go into hiding or go to other countries in exile and many of the artists did end up in New York. This allowed new artists to become aware of the movement and to take it up and reiterate it in several forms. But the movement primarily died at the beginning of World War II. It is, of course, important to point out that the movement was majority led by men and it is now known that it was inherently sexist. But many of the women who were in relationships or in friendships with the men that founded Surrealism made a lot of amazing work themselves, which we are now giving its proper due respect. So with that in mind, some of the artists that you might have heard of or you might not have heard of that practiced Surrealism are Max Erst, Salvador Dali, Claude Calhoun and René Negrete, Remedos Vero, Merritt Oppenheim, Jean Arp, Yves Tangui, Joan Miro and Leonora Carrington. Okay, so now that you have a little bit more of an idea of what surrealism was and what the idea behind it is, let's talk about Anya's work. So I'm going to go in semi-chronological order. Um, so we're going to start with her old self-portrait and I say old because she intentionally made a self-portrait in the way she imagined she would look in a number of years time and how her face would age. She used blue non-naturalistic colour and so it definitely placed the work into this unreal imaginative space in a way that we might see it as a dream or an imagination of that future rather than a realistic representation of it. And she talks about having strange dreams and how that led her to paint that specific work. And this, of course, is very surrealist. They would often record their dreams and they would try and unpick the symbolic meanings of different images or events that would happen in one's dreams. She also uses a cropped composition, which you will see a lot. That is where you only get part of the body or the image. And she uses a 
one tonal blank background behind, which was properly first seen in neoclassicism, but is very widely used today and it allowed the focus to be on the figure or the sitter rather than on any scenery. Then I'm putting these two videos together. Anya definitely does some upcycling which we love, fighting fast fashion, saving the environment, all that jazz, but artistically it's very interesting her use of objects and painting on clothes and shoes. Also, surrealism became a part of advertisement and the commercial industry once it gained traction in New York. Her original Air Force One designs were very simplistic, mainly black and white and gold, and they had flame-like symbols with lines that connected them, almost to me like synapse in the brain and how we connect thoughts. And her Air Forces Part 2, she changes them to a more chocolate brown palette and with these squiggles, which you will see come up in her work quite a lot. And that is definitely reminiscent of abstraction, but also some of the more playful, childlike elements that we see in some artists' work. The next piece I wanna talk about is her oil landscape painting. This is a slight departure from the other works that we're gonna talk about, but it was her first attempt at oil painting and I thought it was a very successful painting and it's interesting to think about the landscape in which she was observing as the American landscape and she often talks about her interest in Impressionists like Van Gogh. The Impressionists had a deep appreciation for the landscape, for light and clouds and colour. Moving on to some more upcycling art. She decorated a couple of pairs of trousers but I am going to specifically talk about the white uh, trousers that she painted. There were so many different elements to these trousers and they were very detailed and very funky and I would definitely wear them. She uses more abstract shapes and she uses these outstretched hands and arms that are almost disembodied. This in itself is quite dreamlike. She also paints a figure with multiple legs which does remind me of the futurists who were very interested in movement. One particular artist that comes to mind is Giacomo Balla. She also has some other abstract figures and they will come up in other works of hers, namely in her sketchbooks, and they are very kind of squiggly um, line drawings, but they do remind me of Anselm Kiefer's sketchbook drawings and they definitely to me are reminiscent of exploring of the psyche and of the inner self. She then paints this black and white checkerboard which is very much like a chessboard and that was definitely seen in a lot of surrealist paintings, most notably in Salvador Dali's work. I think the chessboard is a really interesting parallel to how the mind works because it is a strategy game but also the chess pieces can have different connotations or different meanings. She then paints eyes on the back pockets of the jeans and this is definitely reminiscent of this painting by René Magritte but also one of the first things I thought of was a film called Spellbound in 1945 in which Dali painted the set design and there are lots of these weird drooping disembodied eyes. Eyes obviously are the window to the soul and it also always reminds me of um, the Great Gatsby the eye that is ever present and ever watching and perhaps is some sort of godlike figure. She also writes Sad Man 
on the trousers and she doesn't specifically draw the sad man character but you will see she has this specific character that she draws a lot in her sketchbooks or in her artwork in which she says the sad man reflects or is a metaphor for her emotions and I definitely think there is connotations to ideas of mortality and also older or wiser figures perhaps being inherently good or more experienced of the world. I also liked when she wrote Am I Cool Yet and how she's been writing that a lot sort of to ask whether she as an artist is cool or good and I think that is very common to self-doubt as an artist but also the sort of self-consciousness of it is very reflective of this surrealist style or mindset. Moving on from this she makes a, another self-portrait and it is a split face with this water running down it. It's quite interesting because it melds the surrealist aesthetic with a Van Gogh impressionistic paint application. The composition of a split face reminds me of René Magritte's The Double Secret and there was also a film called The Seashell and the Clergyman in 1928 which had these sort of disembodied split faces. She said that it was Vincent van Gogh and Frida Kahlo inspired. She speaks of the idea that sometimes we feel like a desert and we're drying out and the water is pouring out of us and we have to search for new sources of water. At this point I do want to look at Frida Kahlo and why she might be an important um, artistic figure for Anya and the parallels that we might see in their work. Frida Kahlo was born July 6th 1907 in Mexico City. Her most known paintings were made after 1925 when she was in a severe streetcar accident that left her badly injured and it would affect her mobility for the rest of her life. From that point of trauma and because of the consequences that would play out on the rest of her life including depression, chronic pain and miscarriages she often painted self-portraits as a reflection of her emotions, her trauma and her life experiences as well as her cultural identity and grappling with the changes in her relationships. Her paintings were often uh, small scale due to her lack of mobility and many of her portraits are cropped close up. They were likely painted with a small mirror. However, this small cropped composition makes it very powerful and bold and almost confronts the viewer. And there is this particular painting where she stands with her torso broken in in two and there is a column that is coming up through her ribcage and in the background you can kind of see that she is in a desert so that sort of imagery definitely reminds me of Anya's portrait and her ideas of feeling like she is in a desert and the way that her face is broken and distorted. In a paint with me video Anya does another portrait which is surrounded by these watercolours that have flowers and a frog and is generally inspired by her natural surroundings. This again could be slightly inspired by Frida Kahlo's compositions. She often was surrounded or used animals within her work such as monkeys, hummingbirds, dogs or cats. They were protective and tender symbols and the hummingbird symbolises hope and good luck in Mexican culture. The watercolour painting also reminds me of The Dream by Henri Rousseau which has influences on surrealist uh, styles as it does take us into this almost otherworldly experience and those who were viewing it wouldn't have been familiar with this more tropical landscape and so it, in a way it did feel very dreamlike. 
she also recently did a painting of a figure in a burning fire and the figure is pushing another face down which is also herself and she speaks of how this is her being at war with herself and she speaks of ideas of human desire good and bad right and wrong and the way in which we should look inside ourselves to find understanding and truth rather than basing it on the morals of the outside world and this relates to the overall themes of surrealism that they were trying to find a new reality within themselves and a new way of expressing and living life because the horrors of war and um, the horrors of society gave them no hope and that is all of the works that I am going to cover I think overall Anya's art style is continuing to develop it is bold and expressive and very intuitive and it reflects her personality um, which really comes across in her videos as very vibrant and busy and chaotic in the best kind of way and she's not the only artist working in surrealism today a number of contemporary surrealists include Mary Ride Kelly Nathaniel Mary Quinn, Glenn Brown and Gina Sheff. So if you are interested in surrealism there is tons of stuff for you to look at and explore. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know what sort of art or another YouTuber that you would like me to deconstruct or critique down below and yeah just thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye